Hey everyone, welcome back. So in the last video, we discussed about detailed concept of the Redshift. In this video, we're going to be understanding the ETL on cloud. So without wasting time, let's get started. So over here, we already talked. Okay. So we have one database server over here. Uh, then we have one database server over here. So goal over here is that this is, let's say this is the relational database and this is our Redshift or the data warehouse. And between that we have ETL server. ETL server can be any machine. Don't worry about it. So this ETL server will basically connect to our relational database over here and get some query to fetch some data. So it, so let's say it basically runs the query select star from the table name and it gets all the data from that particular table. Then it will basically store this data onto ETL server. This is generally called as a staging server where you actually store your data to be processed further. And when, then we have, we're going to be basically inserting or copying your data into the destination server. So this is what SQL to SQL ETL looks like. Okay. Now let's understand the similar concept onto the AWS. So we have AWS RDS. Let's say this is our Postgres server. So in the relational database, we have created the Postgres server. So on in between we have AWS EC2 machine. So it is, so EC2 machine is basically our, any computer online we're going to be hosting and we will be doing practical about it. So don't worry about it. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be copying data from this RDS server and store that data onto S3. We already talked about S3. So, you know, we can store literally anything on S3. So what we're going to do, we're going to get those data and store that data onto S3 in CSV file. CSV file is your comma separated values. So we're going to be storing that and then we're going to be using copy command. We're going to talk about copy command right now, but we're going to be using some kind of copy command to load that data onto AWS Redshift. That is your entire ETL pipeline. Now let's look this particular thing into more detail. Okay. So this is what the architecture looks like. Okay. So we have multiple sources. So data can be coming from anywhere. Okay. It can be coming from Twitter, Facebook, getting aggregated on RDS or any relational database. It can be coming on from the e some e EC2 instance. If we have created some databases over there, such as DynamoDB, which we already talked about, then it can be coming from RDS or any sources. Sources doesn't matter as long as the data is coming from there. Okay. So this is our database coming from there. Then we have staging server. Okay. So staging server or staging. Yeah. So staging server is basically that from the sources, you get those data and store that data at some in the one place. So staging server is basically from the different sources, you get, get your data and store that data somewhere into the staging server. So in the, in this case, we have S3. So we will extract some kind of data from the RDS or all the other sources, and we will store that data onto AWS S3. Then we have ETL machines. So ETL can be anything literally. Okay. We have like EC2 instance, Apache Airflow, and it can be any tool such as Informatica, Alteryx, or any other simple Python code can work. Okay. So don't worry about the ETL part. So it is just kind of a machine that sits between the source and the destination that transform our data into some kind of logic. Then after ETL, we're going to be storing our data into data warehouse. In this case, we have AWS Redshift, Amazon Redshift. Then if you want to build the OLAP cubes, uh, we haven't talked about this, but we, we're going to be talking about this in future. So this is the OLAP cubes, how we, so we can store that information on the RDS and S3 again. And at the final, we have visualizations. So QuickSight, Data Studio, Tableau, all the other BI apps can connect to Redshift directly or any relational database to build the final visualization. Okay. So, so we understood what kind of architecture, what this looks like from the, you know, uh, technical perspective. Now let's say how to load data at scale. Okay. At like how to load the big data onto Redshift. Okay. And it can be used and it can be done in single command. So ingesting data into Redshift using copy command. Okay. So, so basically Amazon provides us the copy command to load data from S3 to Redshift. Okay. So using single command, you can quickly load the big, huge amount of data, let's say 10 TB or 20 TB of data into this within. So, so here's the thing. Okay. So why do we need copy command on the first place? Why we can't just read data and use the insert query that we were using into the relational database. The reason is that it is really slow. So let's say we have millions of rows. Okay. And the insert queries 
iterate over each and every row and then inserts data onto the destination. So if we have the million rows, then it will take forever to run those. We will need like really large server to actually process that kind of data. So the thing is, it's better to break that large file into multiple chunks and then process it parallelly. So this is, we can do using the common prefix name. So if we have the common name, we can use that and or you can use the manifest file and we'll talk about that. Don't worry about it. Just try to understand what I'm trying to say and just try to visualize the bigger picture what we're doing here. So we have some data stored somewhere that is really large. Okay. So in order to divide the data, we need to find the common prefix that when we will do the final exercise, you will understand that. And based on that prefix, we will be loading data into different chunks. Also, it is easier to, it will be much faster if you ingest data from the same and also if you compress your CSV file, it will also makes the processing much easier and faster. So this is what the syntax of copy command looks like. So this is simple. Okay. You just need to write the copy, the table name, the table name inside the redshift from the data source and some kind of authorization that you need to provide, such as the IAM role that we're going to be creating. Same over here, the copy cat demo. So we're going to be storing our data into the cat demo folder. The data source is from the S3. So this is what the S3 source looks like. Then we have, we are basically providing the IAM role information. Don't worry about this thing right now. Just understand the syntax. And at the end, we have region. So we need to provide the region from where we are basically pulling the data. So this is your copy command and we so this is your so this is your copy command and when we do our first exercise we will be able to understand this in detail so let's talk about doing etl from all the other sources okay so it is possible to ingest data from ec2 using ssh machine so if we have some kind of data stored onto the ec2 or all the other servers so you can connect to ec2 server and pull that data and we can use s3 as a staging server also so we, if we want to collect all the data from the different sources and put that onto a single bucket we can do that and for the etl we can literally use anything so just as airflow nifi aws pipeline all those services are available now let's talk about aws redshift pricing so i've taken this from their actual website so generally client pays an hourly rate based on the type and number of nodes in your cluster so we already talked about the compute node so based on the compute node you select you will pay for that amount and there are like different types of node sizes available. So there is a discount to up to 75% on on-demand rates and committing redshift for one to three years. So this basically means if you commit uh, for those servers and if you tell the AWS that you're going to be using this cluster for next three years, then you will get some kind of discount. So prices also include two copies of your data. So you will have your co one copy of your data on your cluster node and one it will store it on the AWS S3. So let's say in case you delete something on your node, so you can actually retrieve it using S3. So this is basically backup. And so basically the redshift take care of the backup, durability, availability, security, monitoring, everything. Then prices depends also on the region. So on the Mumbai region, the prices might be different than the region on the US. Okay, so this is completely regional based. So we have like, two types of nodes. One is your dense storage, which allows you to create large data warehouse using hard disk, which is HTT. So it is in the low price because it is quite slow. And this is basically used when you have really large data from the perspective of volume. So let's say if you have 30, 40 TB of data, then you can use this kind of dense storage node types and you can use the compute where it allows you to get the high performance if you want some faster reads and if you want faster IO from your redshift, then you can use compute based storage. So you can see the difference. We have like DS1 extra. It provides like two CPU, ECU, like 4.4, then RAM, all the other things These are like the complete technical. And if you want to learn about these things more, you can just go to it as documentation to understand what each and everything means. And you, you need to pay per hour. So, the cost of this DS one X large, this is basically what we're going to use. So the cost for this is 0 0.850 per hour. And for the compute, we have 0 0.2. Let's use this. This is much cheaper. Okay. So we're going to be using the compute one. So we also will, we will have like the powerful performance. 
So in the next video, we will be doing our first exercise. We will launch our first Redshift cluster. And before that, we will also set the billing alert. So you don't get billed more than uh, needed. Okay. So see you in the next video. Thank you.